Axle out, wheel out, not magic, just logic. Welcome back everyone. It's good to be home on the farm in Australia on a T7. Should I send it? Should I send it? Yeah, awesome. It's good to be home after four months in Europe. And cool that Yamaha Australia hooked us up with this T7. Better not send this one too hard. T7 at Boost Town. Not today. Not on standard suspension anyway. Yeah, so the first feature I want to do for you guys to show you how to fix your own flat tire by yourself in the bush and um, I'm actually legit trying to pop it I probably shouldn't but I am Just got a flat tire. Whatever will I do? Basically, the first thing you should do when you get a flat is chill out. Don't be in a rush to puncture your new tube that you're about to put in. Right, while the bike is uh, upright and you're not juggling an elevated wheel, hook in and loosen all of the bolts that you need to undo to get the wheel out. Rather than take all this mud guard off, it's easier just to drop a caliper. So that's our... Right, now I've got to crack the axle. Got my little gadget here. Just get that axle loose. It's going to feel tight under the weight of the bike, but that's ready to go. That'll, that'll come out by hand once it's elevated. Now, Let's make the magic happen. And the magic happens thanks to like a four or five dollar strap from a hardware wherever. And then of course, tire levers. And what else have I got in here? Yeah, yeah. Bit of a zip tire supply, just get that out the way. And of course, pump, gas bottle, little uh, gas bottle valve. So for this to work you want to get the bike nice and tight with the side stand in at the center of the tree and just kind of face the the front wheel out 45 degrees. Then it's just a matter of grabbing your strap, your two meter strap from the hardware, feed this between the bar clamps and go around the right hand bar clamp and back because what that'll do is keep the bars crossed up and your wheel facing outwards and it's just a more stable anchoring than letting it float in the middle. Right, can take up a bit of tension but pretty much ready. And then from there it's just a matter of grabbing the front wheel, grab the strap, lean into it, lift the bike and just torque it. And you now have your ready-made bush workshop. And nowhere is this bike touching the tree. It's just poised. The T7's got a pretty substantial side stand, so she's just gonna sit pretty while you get the job done. Axle out. Wheel out. There we go. Not magic, just logic. A freestanding motorcycle, front wheel out, on the side stand. All you need is a tree or a fence post. One thing that's good is just to put a little cloth down just to keep the shit out of the bearings and the spacers. It's good to do it in the dirt. That just pushes in and doesn't bend anything, you know, soil gives. Right, best advice I ever got. Start at the valve, finish at the valve. So 
make sure the beads pop to both sides. If the back side isn't broken, flip it over and push that off the bead too. See that? See that just release? Right? You're just going to make it easier on yourself if both sides of the bead are off. Because then when you get your knees in there like that, you want to push that bead right into the valley this side. And it just makes it a hundred times easier to get the the top the lever in and you use these little these are the best because you use these these little lips there and you just hook them in don't get too greedy just spout that that wide's good one two and just uh, wriggle that out take another bite just go easy I'm being gentle here because I haven't actually popped the tube, so I'm going to reuse it. If you've popped the tube and you've got a spare, just jam it in there and rip the sucker out. Once you're there, you don't even need the levers. You can literally just get your fingers in there and pull the tire off. Right, pull it up. You've got full access to the valve. There it is. So just go around to the valve, flick it out. Right, there's my tube. I'm not gonna use my spare because I don't need to. And then, easiest way I'll show you, just poke the valve in there, get the rest of the tube in. Just, oh, see that? That there a perfect amount of air you want about that much air in it just to keep it because what happens is if you put it in floppy it can fall against the the bead and it's easier to pinch risk of pinching so that just sits in there and the tire just, it just swallows up into the valley right now get your valve stem and hole and uh, try and show you this here like there's your, there's your valve hole. My valve's in there. Literally just get your fingers up on the inside. And then this side, right, you can lift that up. You can see that little valve in there? It's right, it's a piece of cake. Just poke it up, get your fingers in there. You can get rid of that now. Pull the tire away, poke it through. See that? Put your valve cap on like that. And that just stops it pulling through. Now again, same thing in reverse. You wanna finish at the valve. Put the valve away from you, like that. The same distance you started with, just pick that up. You can see that it's not, that it's clear of the tube. So put that in, get your knee into there, take one out, go equal distance away. And we're on here. Boom, boom. Now get your both knees in and push that right into the valley. Now just work with one lever. Just take your time. Start working towards the valve. Take your time. Piece of cake. Just give a little knee in there like that. And then start taking very small bites. Just take small bites here. Hold that from coming out. nearly there you can flip it over and there's less chance of pinching anything and don't even go all the way if you go you don't have to go all the way down because then you, then you risk pinching the tube just hit the thing on done right so pump little uh, valve tool gas cylinder I've had this forever it's time to go is it going to be a dud or is it going to work? So tap is closed. Everything's tight. Well, I reckon we've pierced it. Okay, we're ready to open the tap. Wow, that had some pressure, more than I was expecting. Lucky I pushed it back on. You know what? <laughs> If I hadn't let that blow off, that would have been good to go. But as it is, we've got at least 18 pound in there, I reckon. 
I mean, I could, I could ride away on that. The bead is out on that side. Just a little bit here. All right, let's see if I can crank it out with the hand pump. Work out, I tell you. Nah, that's good. Back on the trails. Back to Boost Town with that pressure. Job done. One thing, just in case you've bumped the front brake lever, just give these calipers a little flare with the uh, fire lever. Right, make sure your ABS ring is on the right with the magnet. It's all on the one side. Another reason to do everything on the one side, drop that one caliper. Um, when, you, when you're lifting the bike up, the best thing to do is just to get the wheel like no more than a boot height off the ground because you slot that in, get your boot under, line up the disc, that's in, that's in, just control it with your foot, axle through. So start that with your fingers just so you know the thread's not bound in any way, it's started perfectly before you crank into it. This is the most important part of getting your front wheel in, is remembering to do your axle up all the way home to lock all spaces against the bearing and pull the whole thing home. I mean, people are gonna start talking torque wrenches and all that shit, but if, you've, if you're a dirt bike racer, especially enduro, the amount of wheels you've done up in race conditions and different bikes and brands and it's got to be tight, you know, like with that leverage, that's good. Everything's home. It can't go anywhere. Nice. Right, next, let's get the other caliper on. Take your time, eye it up. You don't want those pads to dislodge. So that's just sitting pretty perfect. Okay, one. All right, again, it's up to the rider. Don't take my word for it. If you feel comfortable getting a torque wrench, do it. I like that. And I like that. Right, calipers are done, axles tight. Last thing are the pinch, is the pinch bolts on this side, but you leave that to the very end. Right, when you drop it back, the pay is just to come around this side. Don't do it from that side in case when you release it, it falls off the stand and comes away from you. You got better control here. And then just crack the tie down. Done. Whoops, pump the brake. Don't forget to pump the brake. Right. I always like to give the fork a good crank down and then don't forget to nip up these pinch bolts seated nicely I just like to get those even again get a torque wrench if you're not confident but um, yeah job done awesome I hope you enjoyed that guys uh, really looking forward to putting in some big K's on this Tenere 700. Um, I do like these things. They really are a good starting point for anyone that has an off-road background and wants to get into the, you know, the, the real adventurous adventure game. This is a great platform to start with. Sure, the suspension can be a lot better for the, the rides that I do and the way I like to ride, but that's all projects to come. Uh, in the meantime, what I'm going to do next in complete standard trim is set the bike up for an epic adventure, you know, like multi-day camping. And I want to give you guys a bit of an insight into how to pack lighter. 
the majority of the people around the world on adventure bikes are just on overloaded death traps and I, I, it's got, it does my head in as to what it is they've even got in there so um, that's coming up next so check out this video right here and uh, yeah plenty more to come and don't forget to subscribe and all that stuff hit the notification bell and yeah thanks